I am the God that healeth thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and heal your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. Again, a wonderful time to share the word of God with you, listeners. The Lord God bless everyone who has tuned in to the Bible lecture series on radio. A very good day to all the precious listeners out there. Please send your Bible questions and comments to my email address at BibleLectureSeries at gmail.com. BibleLectureSeries at gmail.com. I prefer email counseling, but you can also reach me by telephone on Fridays from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. at 54 3462 or zero two six eight six three nine five four zero. In our last broadcast, we were looking at uh, the proper way of fasting, and we were looking at the lives of uh, several men of God and to see how they fasted. And the doctrine that we are teaching is that you fast to receive the word of God. And so we are looking at. Uh, the life of Elijah and after that we are now going to look at the life of Jehoshaphat king of Judah to see how he fasted and what he received again look at this king of Judah he fasted to receive a word from God which he shared with the people and they all were saved not only were they just saved but the word of God that came to them also brought them huge riches that took three days to carry away Turn with me to Second Chronicles chapter 20 and we're picking up from verse 1. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria and behold they be in Hazazon Tamar which is Engedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. Tomorrow go ye down against them, behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves again. Set yourselves. Stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies falling to the earth, and none escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much. 
Next we go to Hadassah, that is Esther, the queen, again to see how she fasted and what she got from that correct way of fasting. Hadassah, that is Esther, the queen. Hadassah fasted and received a word of favor from King Ahasuerus. Consequently, her life was spared from death as well as the lives of all the Jews in the realm of King Ahasuerus. So again we learn that you fast to receive a word from God, a word that has the power to change your life and the lives of all the people around you. Turn with me to Esther chapter 4 verse 16 and we read, Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise and so will I go in unto the king which is not according to the law and if I perish, I perish. Then we pick up from Esther chapter 5 verse 1. Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house over against the king's house. And the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house over against the gate of the house. And it was so when the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court that she obtained favor in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. Next we shall look at the life of Jezebel, the queen, wife of Ahab, to see what we can learn on the lesson of fasting. Jezebel, the queen, wife of Ahab. The lesson in the following verses is that when human beings fast and the aim of the fasting is not to receive revelation from the word of God, evil comes out of that fast fasting. Turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 21 verse 8. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal and sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in his city dwelling with Naboth and she wrote in the letter saying proclaim a fast and set Naboth on high among the people and the men of his city even the elders and the nobles who were the inhabitants in his city did as Jezebel had sent unto them and as it was written in the letters which she had sent unto them. They proclaimed a fast and set Naboth on high among the people and there came in two men, children of Belial, and sat before him. And the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king. Then they carried him forth out of the city and stoned him with stones that he died. Then in 1 Kings 21.14 we read, Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth is stoned and is dead. Now we go to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, to see what lesson we can learn from his own fasting. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, fasted 40 days and 40 nights. He did not fast to receive any power as several of our modern day prophets falsely teach their congregations to fast for the power of God. We know that Jesus Christ did not fast to receive power because the power came upon him before he started the fasting, specifically at the time when he was baptized of John the Baptist and the Holy Spirit of God descended and remained on him. So Jesus Christ had the power before he did the fasting. And we need to emphasize that very clearly. At the end of his fasting, he received revelation in the word of God. And this was the word of God that he quoted to Satan three times to defeat that evil one. Turn with me to Matthew 3.16 onwards. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. 
And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Then Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Next we shall see the lives of the disciples of Jesus Christ to know how they fasted and what they received from the fasting. In this example we see that just as our modern day Christians still do not understand the correct concept of fasting, the same false understanding of fasting was being held by the church leaders in the time of Jesus Christ. Then when they expressed that false idea of fasting to Jesus Christ, see the answer that Jesus Christ gave them. The biblical teaching that Jesus Christ was giving them through his parabolic answer is that you fast to receive a word of revelation from God. And Jesus Christ is the word that became flesh. Now the same word of revelation is right here with them. So what is the need to fast to receive something that is already with you? According to Jesus' reasoning. Nonetheless, notice again that Jesus Christ said that when the word of bridegroom is taken away from them, then they would fast. Surely, as he said, the disciples began to fast and pray after Jesus Christ the word resurrected and went back to heaven. Let us confirm all that with the following verses. Mark, Mark chapter 2 verse, verse, we pick up from verse 19. And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come. When the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. Now let's look at Acts chapter 13 verse 3. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. Still on the lives of the disciples of Jesus Christ, we see the demonstration of the spiritual fact that you fast to receive a word from God for the salvation of souls and not for personal gain. Turn with me to Acts 13. We pick up from verse 1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Manian which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul and as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. So you see that the fasting brought about a word from the Holy Spirit. Next we go to the life of Paul the Apostle. Again we want to see how he fasted and what he gained from the fasting. So faced with... Uh, imminent death apostle paul fasted until he had a word from god again showing clearly that the proper way to fast is fasting for a word from god and nothing else in the end when the word came not only was his own life spared but also the lives of all they that were with him turn with me to acts 27 we pick up from verse 21. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. For there stood by me this night 
the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe that it shall be even as it was told me. We will conclude this Bible lesson on fasting by recalling that so far we have examined fasting in the lives of Abraham, Moses, Samuel the prophet, Elijah the Tishbite, Jehoshaphat king of Judah, Hadassah, that is Esther the queen, Jezebel the queen, wife of Ahab, Jesus Christ the son of God, the disciples of Jesus Christ and Paul the Apostle. From the lives of all those people, we learned two major lessons on fasting. One, you do not fast to receive power as the false prophets have been teaching, but rather you fast to receive insight and revelation in the Word of God. Number two, when human beings fast and the aim of the fasting is not to receive revelation from the word of god evil and death come out of that fasting as we saw in the life of jezebel the queen wife of ahab in conclusion we have demonstrated to you from genesis to revelation that you fast to receive a word from god Therefore, the most important question that you must ask someone who has been fasting is this. What did the Lord say? Or, what did God reveal to you in his word? If the person does not have any new revelation from the word of God as what was obtained from the fasting, then that person did not fast according to the word of God. And as such, that fasting is the false and useless type. From all the several examples, we also conclude that it is not possible to fast according to the laws of God and receive no revelation. As long as you fast as a true child of God, you must receive a word from God. And such a word is for sharing so that others may also receive edification and salvation. May the word of the Lord prosper in your life as you understand it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We go now to chapter 7 of the book Matthew, an intralingual translation, and the title is, It is Written. And we pick our anchor verse from Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. We read, But he answered and said, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. As I listen to the reading of the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ, chapter 19, from verse 11, the following thoughts came to me. God reigns supreme and almighty in heaven. God has millions of multitudes of angels to minister unto him. Satan rebelled against God by harboring evil thoughts in his mind. He wanted to be God, according to Isaiah chapter 14, verse 14. Satan consequently drew a third of the angels of heaven into his evil influence and thinking. God is one entity but can divide himself into several entities or beings the same way as man is able to see himself in a dream one night a warrior another night a woman another night a flying being etc and so on and so forth the part of god that resisted satan is called christ God separated Satan and his rebellious angels and cast them out of heaven. But because there was one planet called heaven and God dwelt in that planet, and God will not share heaven with rebellious Satan, God made another planet called earth and God put Satan and his angels in the planet earth. According to Revelation chapter 12 verses 7 to 9, 
And then God made a new being separate from the angels in heaven who will live only on earth. And that being is called man. In order for God to claim ownership of this new being called man, God put some of his spirit into man. Thus man began life by inheriting from God. Number one, a spirit. And number two, a physical earth to take care of. Thus man had two entities or two personalities, unseen spirit and a tangible flesh living in the same body. God shuttled between heaven and earth at regular intervals in order to visit with this new creature called man, whose name was Adam. While God was in heaven, man got busy by dressing the beautiful garden of Eden, which was the home that God had made for man. God never told man that Satan was also dwelling on the face of the earth, but God knew that Satan was lurking around man, and therefore God gave a commandment which when fully obeyed would have kept Satan forever at a distance. God said, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. We see that in Genesis chapter 2 verses 16 to 17. Now, Satan was 100% spirit and knew that man was 50% spirit and 50% physical. From the spiritual angle, Satan knew that God's spirit covered man. However, from the physical angle, Satan knew that man only had a commandment as a safeguard. So, Satan came through the physical angle, caused man to look at the fruit and while man's attention was diverted to the fruit and man's full mental and physical faculties were half engaged on the physical fruit, Satan delivered the knockout blow via the spiritual angle. The blow was a simple question, yet not a simple question. It was a very loaded question. It was a question designed to achieve one objective, raise doubt in the mind of the hearer. Then he said to the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden, according to Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. And so it is the same doubt that can arise in your mind after you have shared the same elevator with John in the morning and then you get into your office and someone tells you, Oh, John called, called in sick this morning. Now, because the person telling you that John called in sick uh, is the right person who should first know if any colleague will not come to work or any part on any particular day, you then begin to doubt in yourself it would, if it was truly the same John that you shared the elevator with in the morning and even shared jokes with him. In the spiritual realm, your mind has to be anchored on one thing at a time. You cannot vacillate between two thoughts. Hence it is written, And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. And then from first uh from James chapter 1 verse 8 we see a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways therefore the moment man began to waver between God's earlier commandment not to eat of the fruit and Satan's slippery thought to try the fruit man already lost the battle man's answer to Satan to his evil suggestion should have been an outright dismissal the moment man entertained that evil thought of maybe, maybe, man already lost the battle and became a slave to Satan. There are several laws in the spiritual realm. One of the spiritual laws is that obedience confers ownership on the one who issued the directive or order. As we read in Romans chapter 6 verse 6, it says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are. To whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Thus, the moment man Adam obeyed Satan through Eve his wife, 
and ate of the fruit that God had commanded them not to eat, they immediately became slaves of Satan. In that very moment then, Adam and Eve obeyed Satan contrary to the commandment of God. Satan became their new owner, master, and lord. Another spiritual law is that anything that the slave acquires automatically becomes the property of the slave master. Hence, all humans born through Adam become owned by Satan and took on the death nature of Satan. Now remember that thousands of years ago in Revelation chapter 12 verse 17 to 9, the part of God that resisted Satan is called Michael or Archangel angel or Christ. So now God sent the same Christ to come to earth and accomplish what Adam failed to perform. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 22. Since Christ first defeated Satan in heaven, that means that they knew each other. In, a, in addition, since Satan now owned the earth and humanity, he also had the right to subject to temptation any being that is born on the face of the whole earth. Thus, Jesus being born in the flesh was subject to the temptation of Satan. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, according to Matthew chapter 4 verse 1 and Satan tried the same old temptation that worked on Adam this time unlike Adam who had no prior knowledge of Satan and failed miserably Christ knew Satan in heaven and Christ knew what defeated Satan in the past and so Christ did not take his eyes off the ball while Satan tried the same trick by showing the enticing physical world and the stones to be made bright Christ stayed fixed on the word of God, in the commandment of God, in the knowledge of God. Jesus Christ empowered himself in the word of God. And so for three times when Satan tried the same trick in different ways, Jesus Christ replied, It is written. It is written. It is written. Matthew chapter 4 verses 4 to 10 we see all that encounter at that point satan knew that he would not be able to get jesus christ to take his eyes off the word of god hence satan was defeated hallelujah thus in the same way as all humans born through adam became owned by satan this time all humans born through jesus christ became owned by god and are the children of god Brothers and sisters, the best thing that you can do in your whole life is to refuse to take your eyes off the word of God. May the Holy Spirit help us to do just that. Amen. This is where we will end for today. The Lord willing, we will have a new Bible lesson in our next broadcast. You have been listening to Dr. Peter Price of the Department of French, University of Education, Winnipeg. I thank you for tuning in and listening. Please send your Bible questions and comments to my email address at BibleLectureSeries at gmail.com. BibleLectureSeries at gmail.com. Again, the Ghana telephone numbers are 054-776-3462 or 026-863-9543. Signing off on the Bible Lecture Series, I have been your host and Bible teacher, Dr. Peter Price. Until we meet again, may the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ keep and protect you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Amen. I am the God that healeth thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and heal your disease I am the Lord your healer